Hi guys, my name is Michelle and I create hair, makeup and lifestyle content here on YouTube. Can a normal traditional conditioner be used as a leave-in conditioner? This is a question that I get so much and in today's video, I'm going to attempt to answer that question and also give you an idea of the differences between a traditional conditioner and a leave-in conditioner. So, if that sounds like something that interests you, then keep watching. So, in today's video, I want to be as accurate as possible and all of this information is researched, all of this information has sources, none of this information is coming from me. So, I'm going to cite all of my sources down in the description bar. Please check it out and read further. And of course, do not mind if I read because I don't want to use my own words. I want to be as scientifically sound as possible. So, first, Let's understand what is a traditional conditioner, that is a rinse out conditioner, and what is a leave in conditioner. A rinse out conditioner is a step that came usually right after shampooing. It adds moisture back into your hair that was stripped out from the shampooing process. A rinse out conditioner's main purpose is to add moisture to the hair. So, usually, it is a much thicker formula of ingredients and it is much thicker in consistency. And leave-in conditioner which is also called no rinse or leave-on conditioner are used right after you wash your hair and before you style it. It is traditionally supposed to be applied to towel dried hair. Unlike traditional conditioners, they are not washed out and leave-in products add extra moisture to the hair, protect it from damage and help to detangle strands. So, what are the differences in the formulation of the two? For this segment of the video, I have spoken to my friend. His name is Aditya Bose and he is in the States. He has worked in a cosmetic lab. He has worked in product formulation, in R&D, in quality control. He's worked with skincare. He's worked with sunscreens. And since he has worked with cosmetic chemists, and product formulators in a cosmetic lab, I thought it would be very important to speak to him and get his take on certain aspects of the formulation differences between the two. So, a rinse out conditioner is heavier in formulation. It contains oils and butters and it can cause skin irritation and has the ability to clog pores on the scalp and therefore it is advised to rinse it out thoroughly so that nothing is left behind on the scalp since we know that a clogged scalp is going to cause hair fall. A rinse out conditioner will also balance the pH of the scalp. It is formulated on the principle of dilution deposition. Now, in his words, the way dilution deposition works is that they formulate a product so that when you rinse it off your hair, the good stuff is supposed to precipitate out of the solution and stay back on the hair. Dilution deposition is the property measuring how much of the useful polymers and chemicals of the product you're using actually get left behind on the strands. Companies will measure this by measuring the rinse out water coming out of your hair and seeing how much of that good stuff was actually left behind on your hair. Rinse out conditioner is supposed to enter the hair fill in the hair cuticle and make it stronger. Whereas leave-in conditioner is formulated to be much lighter than normal rinse out conditioner and traditionally it does not contain oils and butters. But I use the word traditionally because you will notice that for curly girls leave-in conditioners definitely do contain oils and butters and are not always lighter in formulation. So please remember that when I'm talking about leave-in conditioners and their formulation, I'm talking about leave-in conditioners in the traditional sense. I'm not talking about curly haired products specifically. So leave-in conditioners work on the principle of charge deposition. Charge deposition simply means that the ingredients of a leave-in conditioner 
are positively charged and therefore stick on to the negative charge of the damaged sites on the hair and bond together with them giving them nourishment and strength. So rinse out conditioners are formulated on the principle of dilution deposition and leave-in conditioners are formulated on the principle of charge deposition. There are also certain ingredients that are in normal conditioners that do not make them suitable to be left on the hair and these ingredients are number one sulfates as we know that sulfates are detergents that are used in products to clean the hair they are lathering agents that strip the hair of moisture protein and oil causing dryness and frizz so this is the first ingredient to look out for in your conditioner if you are thinking of using it as a leave-in conditioner Second ingredient, silicones. Silicones are lubricants that seal and condition the hair. Silicone in your conditioner is going to add shine to the hair, but essentially you need to think of this as a layer of plastic or rubber that coats your hair. It does not allow water or air to pass and silicones have a tendency to build up on the hair and make it feel weighed down and heavy. They also prevent nutrients from entering the hair. Silicones will also cause damage and breakage. The third ingredient to be wary of when it comes to your conditioner is a surfactant. So surfactants are molecules that spontaneously bond with each other and form sealed bubbles. Surfactants are compounds that lower the surface tension between two liquids, two gases, a liquid and a gas, a liquid and a solid. Surfactants in hair care products act as ingredients, wetting agents or foaming agents. Number four, heavy oils and butters. Traditional leave-in conditioners do not contain heavy ingredients that could potentially build up on your hair and weigh it down. Lucky for us following CG, we already do not use any products with sulfates or silicones in them. So if you're wanting to use your normal conditioner as leave-in conditioner for budget reasons, then all you have to do is check the ingredient list and see if it has a surfactant. Forget about the oils and the butters because essentially curly hair does need heavier ingredients in them. So if you look at the ingredient list of a conditioner that is supposed to be a leave-in for curly hair, you will find butters and oils because curly hair sometimes, especially if you have tighter curls, your hair definitely can withstand some heavier products and you will find butters and oils in your leave-in conditioners. So we'll keep that aside for now. All you have to do is check your ingredient list and see if your normal conditioner is CG friendly, which means that it does not have a sulfate, it does not have a silicone. Lucky for us, we anyway do not use products that contain sulfates and silicones. What you additionally need to do is check your ingredient list and see if it has a surfactant because you definitely do not want a cleansing agent in your leave-in conditioner because that is just going to dry out your hair in the long run. Now, how to understand an ingredient list? All you have to do is go to Google, try to find the ingredient list of the conditioner in question, copy paste the ingredients and go to curlsbot.com or go to isitcg.com, copy paste your ingredients and click enter. It will tell you exactly what the ingredients are and if there are any ingredients in your products that you need to look out for. Now, guys, listen, I love to answer your questions, but if a question can be answered by a simple Google search, then please do your own research. I would request you to do that because guys, come on. I spent so many hours researching these videos and filming and editing. I mean, trust me, these days it is all I do. I research, I film, I edit. I research, I film, I edit. So if a question of yours with regard to product formulation or if your question to me is going to be does XYZ conditioner contain a surfactant? That is something that you can find on your own Google search. 
curlsbot.com is it cg.com plug in your ingredients and it is going to tell you exactly what is in your conditioner do not ask me these questions i am anyway working very very hard for you guys and i do not have time okay sometimes i barely have enough time to take care of myself okay all right enough with that with regard to the formulation of your leave in conditioner being free of oils and butters if you look at the ingredients of leave in conditioners for curly girls this point does not seem to be valid most leave in creams and conditioners tend to have some oils and some butters and some heavier ingredients because more curlier hair or higher porosity hair tends to benefit from heavier ingredients without weighing the hair down and can actually benefit from these heavier products now one reason you're using regular conditioner as a leave in is because there is a lack of leave in conditioners in the market in general in the past girls have done it girls have used traditional conditioner as leave in conditioner because there was a lack of budget products in the market now One reason for using a regular conditioner as a leave-in conditioner is because in general there has been a scarcity of leave-in conditioners that are CG friendly available to you in your country. I mean in the past girls have done it because they haven't had any other option. Secondly, price point. We in India only have four options. when it comes to leave in conditioners that are available to us so number 1 the curl up curl defining cream which retails for 690 rupees for 100 ml of product and also keep in mind that this product contains protein in it secondly we have the fix my curls leave in cream which retails for 725 rupees for 250 grams of product this is the yellow container that i'm talking about this also does contain protein thirdly we have the fix my curls curl quenching hair butter which retails for 925 rupees for 200 grams of product this is the blue container and this does not contain protein it is a moisture product and fourthly you have the ashpa botanics right ringlet leave in conditioner which is 1099 rupees for 237 ml of product this comes in the white bottle with the green packaging i can't find the ingredient list anywhere but i checked the reviews on amazon and it said that it contained protein in it So essentially in India when it comes to leave in conditioners we have four options none of them can be considered budget three of them are protein and only one is a moisture leave in I'm not considering the Arata curl cream as a leave in conditioner because that is a styler and not a conditioner per se I would say that that product needs to be paired up with a leave-in conditioner and it cannot be used as a standalone product it is more of a styler it is not a conditioner so the main reason for girls to use regular traditional conditioner as leave-in has been number 1 the scarcity of products in their country i have some of you writing to me who are not even from india who tell me that you're using regular conditioner as a leave in because you haven't had options for cg leave in conditioners in your country it is the same thing in india secondly even if we have options we have only four options and none of them can be considered to be budget products they are more high end more expensive products If you look at the price point of a normal conditioner or normal hair products in India you would see that the price point of shampoos and conditioners would range between 100 on the lower end to around 350 on the higher end and so considering that we do not have a budget option when it comes to leave-in conditioners a lot of us have used regular conditioners as leave-ins me included but That does not mean that you can't continue to do it. Look at your ingredient list. If your conditioner does not contain a silicone, a sulfate and a surfactant and you are unable to go for a leave-in conditioner that is really expensive, then for the time being there's nothing wrong with doing it. Just 
plug your ingredients into curlsbot.com or into cg.com and see that it doesn't have any of these alarming ingredients. Secondly, when you're using your regular conditioner as leave-in, make sure that you focus the product from the mid-length to the ends and whatever you have left on your hand you can put in the top sections but avoid your roots avoid your scalp be at least one and a half inch away from your scalp so that there is no chance of you clogging your scalp with those heavy formulations and hopefully you should be good look i also get it I have also been in the same boat as you. Sometimes leave-in conditioners are super, super expensive and it becomes really difficult to spend so much money, especially if you're starting CGM and you get overwhelmed with all of the products that you see on YouTube. You feel like you need all of them. But this is my sincere advice to you. Whenever you have a birthday or Diwali or any occasion that comes around and your family and friends want to gift you something, ask them for an Amazon gift card, collect that money, pool it all in, save it up. Anyway, if you're a good girl following CGM, then you only wash and style your hair once a week, right? So even if you spend a little extra on a product, that is let's say 800 900 or 1000 rupees please understand that that product is going to last you a very very long time because you're only using it once a week if you want me to do a video where i weigh out the amount of product that i use every time i style so that i can tell you exactly how much time you're going to take to go through a bottle so if you want me to take product and measure how much one pump of product weighs then guys i will do that for you maybe that could help you i'm sure you all have a good idea of how many pumps of product you require every time you style your hair so maybe if you want I could take different leave-in conditioners. Anyway, look guys, for YouTube, I'll have to buy them all at some point. So maybe I can weigh out one pump of product for you guys of different conditioners. And then we can look at how much is in the bottle and how much time it is going to take you to go through that bottle. And maybe that could help you out in some way. So hopefully this video has answered all of the questions that you had about the differences between leave-in conditioners and traditional rinse-out conditioners. Hopefully you gained some value. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up because it really does help me out. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Leave me a comment. If you want to see more from me, you can follow me on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching, guys. My name is Michelle and I will see you in the next one. Bye.